see. We are a little bit off with the time here, I guess. Okay. That, work, that should work. Okay, hi everyone. We are going to start in about one minute. And um, just give me a second. I'm just sorting out some technical details. I'm nearly there. Okay, hi everyone. Also on on Facebook, uh, I'm just uh, we're going live. We're already live on YouTube. But hi Mary, Jamie, Shauna, and so on. Wonderful that you're all here. Uh, so this is a very exceptional um, uh, broadcast. It's a special one in the middle of the Super Bowl. <laughs> so I'm going to say hi to everyone. Also on on uh, YouTube now. I can see Buddy Scott, Osprey, Mama, and Jackie, and Kathy, and so on. So sorry to draw you out of the Super Bowl. Uh, I just thought this would be interesting for you. So uh, it's, let me just switch this off one second. Okay, here we go. Switch this off and put myself live. Here we go. Okay, so, so thanks for being with us. This is a very special edition today and I'll tell you why. I woke up this morning and I saw an, um, I saw an article on Dutch Harbor. Dutch Harbor is wonderful because you may remember the story where I went with um, Jack Molen, a captain of, of the Fisher uh, boat and so a very knowledgeable person, probably knows more with the interaction of eagles than, than many or most of us do, especially in real situations and with, with uh, fish. So we all know uh, eagles are scavengers. So I opened up this article this morning that someone sends to me and I said, oh, wow, that's Dutch Harbor. That is incredible. This is so exciting. Um, so, and th that's the article behind me. So I'm just going to make myself small. And we are going to get Captain Jack to comment also on this. So before we start, I'm just going to read out what this is all about and what got me so excited. So they say Glorious Scavenger. That's a wonderful article. It's from a magazine that is called beside okay hi jenny you're also there so i'll read any comments that come in that's great so let me first go through the article i have already shared by the way with osprey mama just to see what the reactions are so i won't tell her what her reaction was okay i want to hear your reaction so before i hear any reactions i am going to read part of it out to you so uh, this has just appeared so it says Dutch Harbor is a small town on a small island far out in Alaska's Aleutian chain, nearly 1,200 miles from Anchorage at the edge of the Bering Sea. Perfectly correct. That's exactly right. It's the most productive fishing port in the United States. We know that from Jack Molan, don't we? Every winter, the tiny population swells with thousands of people who come to work in the fish processing plants on the crab boats exactly that's you know the the, the all, all all the sensational fish stories from the from the greatest catch and so on that's where they come from a big cod and so on we know about the pollock and so on and uh, i think jack molen has alluded to that so it goes on to explain that uh, people in in town call them dutch harbor pigeons the rest of us call them bald eagles yeah that's probably a fact although they call them flying rats as far as i know and that's fine all that is fine and it goes on to say in a community of over 4,000 just 4,700 permanent residents they live an estimated five to eight hundred eagles okay they um and and it goes on and then um the story uh, goes on then, then it says we are used to seeing our national bird as a valiant hero in national documentaries plucking salmon from pristine streams on the back of every dollar bill of our wallets or on pretty much every federal seal from the NSA to the CIA to the office of the president absolutely true and it's something I think you Americans I'm Canadian but you Americans can be very proud of that you chose such a beautiful national symbol what better better one is there to choose. But in Dutch, especially in winter, when it's harder for them to catch fish, you can see eagles and for what they really are. Hardy, scrappy scavengers. Oops. Uh, didn't we know that eagles are scavengers? I mean, 
Uh, most of you who have seen eagles around will know that eagles are scavengers. That's what they are, even by their genus and by all the names, they are defined as scavengers. So a little bit of surprise here, but let's go on. Let's go on and, and see what we learn from this. Turns out when you live in a federal symbol up Close, uh, close and personal, day by day, day in and day out, it's hard of them to think as majestic. In fact, that's also true because people are used to eagles. In Dutch Harbor, bald eagles show up in the local police blotter along reports of drunk fishermen. Mm, drunk fishermen? I didn't see them, honestly. Um, knowing Jack Molan and so on, uh, I think that's a myth. I can tell you it's a myth. I didn't see one single dun uh, drunk fisherman. They are highly disciplined. And this is not a sensational thing. So that's where, where my, my, my eyebrows got raised. Uh, I, I honestly didn't see one single drunk fisherman. I'm sure there are some, but not that they stand out. Passing out in the wrong blank and so on and so on uh, and forklift. It shows like it's a completely drunk city. That's the impression I'm getting. My first mom, uh, morning in Dutch, I went uh, down to KUCB, a local TV station, and asked, here we go, and asked people for their eagle stories. Wonderful idea. Yes, that's exactly what we did, out, we did too. We went out and we wanted to hear their eagle stories. Um, so before I'd gone off the air, I was getting calls and texts. Whoops. One man drove straight over to the station in a snowplow to catch me before I left the car parking lot. Everybody in town has an eagle story, usually more than one. Now it gets interesting. So 16-year-old Ethan was walking back to school eating a piece of pepperoni pizza and an eagle came out of nowhere and snatched it from his hand. Again, yes, that can happen. Absolutely. Absolutely true. Uh, and we'll get Jack Molan in the moment because he's also been attacked by an eagle. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that too, right? And now it gets interesting. So it says, Andres Ayuri, and I don't, no discredit to this wonderful uh, Coast Guard lieutenant. If I mispronounce his name, I apologize. Um, has lived, now listen to this carefully, has lived in Dutch Harbor for just over a year. So you tell me what, what your impression is. There's this Coast Guard who's just arrived, right? Wrong. This is a story that dates back to 2016 because um, there's another article. And they're not the only one. There's one here called Unalaska is the nation's eagle uh, attack capital Y. And, and this is much better written, this article. And when you go and read the article, here's the gentleman. Here he is. And it says, so whatever she's now proclaiming just happened happened some time ago. So nothing wrong with that. It's just, I like accuracy. So when we report, we say this incident happened then and then. It's giving the impression as this ha just happened now. It's not. The Coast Guard uh, did in fact encounter what we're going to hear now, but it happened in 2016 and he left in July, 2017. It's all on the internet and you can actually read it. So I asked myself, well, if there's so many stories to tell, why does the author then have to refer back to a story that happened in 2016? So let's go on and hear what Andres has to say. On his way down, a juvenile uh, eagle decided he or she doesn't like the look of his American eagle hoodie and dive bombed him more than 10 times. Well, here it gets sensational. It's true, eagles attack, and we've heard that from Pam Oz. Pam Oz is, is a very credible woman, and you probably know her wonderful YouTube channel, uh, down in Dutch Harbor. And yes, if you have... Oh, there's Jack Molan calling. Hang on, I'm just trying to <laughs> see his... Jack's calling. Just hang on, Jack. I'll call, you, I'll call you in a sec, okay? Just hang on, Jack. Um, so... Um, She's good. She says, if you wear something red, you can get attacked. And she did, in, in fact, account, uh, uh, encounter attacks from eagles when you're wearing something red. Well, hummingbirds like red and many th do. So all that is correct. It goes on very sensational. Hey, scaring him to death. I was like, no way. Third day in Alaska. I didn't want to come here. And now I didn't want to come here. And now I'm going to die by the hand of an eagle. I don't think that that a coast guard really would have said that i mean he's a, he's a coast guard that's your job right you come out there and well i don't uh, you know i i don't quite believe this story anymore because this person seems like a very credible person and it goes on he he looked up the mountain just in time to see the eagle fly off with his phone also true he lost his phone that's the other story it fell out and the eagle took out and here it goes on during nesting, nesting season when the eagles are protective of their chicks going anywhere near them can be dangerous true 
Now, and goes on, it goes so bad at the post office where one defensive pair has built a nest above the warning signs have gone up, also true, and so on. What is completely missed in the article is to explain that Dutch Harbor is an exception. It's an exception because there's a lot of uh, dive bombing because, well, there are no trees in Dutch Harbor. There are no trees. So they have to, and, Dutch, and, and our friend Jack Molen will get to that in a second, uh, there is no option for them to go anywhere, right? There's no story. No, Susan, it's not a fake story. It's a correct story. What I'm after is accuracy. And what, what we learn from that, we know that, that uh, eagles long time have been, uh, have been uh, hunted as, as dangerous uh, until 1940 in the US and so on. You know all the story until we unlearned how to interpret them. And we know they're scavengers, we know how they behave, but it has nothing to do with the US symbol. It's, you know, I think the US did a great job of us using the bald eagle as a symbol. That's where, I, that's, my, that's where I'm getting at. So if you go on with the story, you get the impression that this happens all the time. One woman was attacked at the post office and then she went to the clinic to get care. But before she could get into the building, she was attacked again. Oh my goodness. So here we go. Now we get the impression that in Dutch Harbor, there are, there are 4,500 people. Everybody has a story to tell and they're attacked constantly when I read this, right? Especially much in the breeding season, but that's what happens. Everybody has a story to tell. And this is how Dutch Harbor this is what goes on in there. And what I'm trying to say is how misrepresentative uh, authors can be and how false information can be misinterpreted. Although every single sentence in this is correct, the context is wrong. And it's very important to put things into proper context. For example, I looked up and I remember interviewing people in Dutch Harbor. The average attacks per year is six to 10. It's six to 10 per year, right? So when you read this, there's no mention of of the lack of trees in Dutch Harbor. There's no mention of what the facts are, okay? And then it goes on, finally, uh, it goes on to say, all of this makes me wonder, is it possible to still respect national symbols once you get to know them? Oops! I asked Andres Ayuri, uh, the Coast Guard lieutenant whose phone was stolen and nearly got scalped. Wow! whether he thought the eagle still deserved to be our national bird. I understand why the eagle is the symbol. A lot of people don't know about the other side. And it's probably best like that. I mean, honestly, I was getting attacked and, I still, uh, and I'm still appreciating the magnificence of the eagle, even though I was cursing it. Well, I think that's, again, probably a, uh, a true statement, but it's put out of context because we all know. And if you don't know that an eagle is a scavenger, then you don't understand the basics of it. And they've always understood that eagles are scavengers. Wherever they are, they are scavengers. They bring in dead fish. They bring in dead whatever. They bring... They... <laughs> so uh, this, this is where I get really disturbed and, and annoyed, honestly, right? And Osprey Mama says, that's a terrible story and statement. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And um, I don't like this because this is supposed to be a a magazine that has a name and calls itself educational and it annoys me to see things out of context. So let's anyway, I've talked so much now and I'm going to bring in Jack Molan. Maybe he's got a different story and maybe he disagrees with me. So Jack, I'm going to just try and go with FaceTime now and bring in Jack. So one second, I'm just going to put a different background in for you. So give me a bit of patience here and I'm going to try and get my friend Jack Molan back in. And see, he's probably thinking, what is Christian doing here? Well, Christian's multitasking because we couldn't get him in with the other thing. So I'm just going to try and get him back in FaceTime. Okay, Jack, give me a second, please. Where are you? Uh, where are you, Jack? One second. Just give me a second, please. I'm trying to get my friend Jack back on. And now I can't get FaceTime on. So I'm going to quit FaceTime and just open it again. Just hang on a sec. Okay. Okay. So let's try and call Jack. Just hang on. Hopefully this will work.
Hello, Jack. Hi there, you picked me up? Yes, I got you. Great. I'm going to put you into on the screen now. So um, just forgive us. This is not perfect. Jack and I just spontaneously uh, had the idea. So I'm going to just um, bring Jack in on the screen for you. Just uh, bear with me. Here's Jack. There, there you are. I'm just going to try and make you a little bit bigger. Oh, well, everything's going strange here. Oh gosh, everything's going wrong here. Wait a sec. I lost Jack, you know. Jack? Yeah, I'm there. Hold on. Okay, okay, we got you. I don't know why. I really am. <laughs> everything's going wrong today. <laughs> okay, I can't see you at the moment. I don't know why the other thing... Wait, I'm going to call you again, Jack. Just put, put it down. I'm going to call you again. Hang on. Okay, wait a second. I'll try him again. Okay, Jack, we got you now. Hello? All this, all this modern inconveniences, huh? <laughs> okay, you have to speak up quite a bit. I'm going to put... You do an amazing job. Well, you don't get to see behind the scenes how many buttons <laughs> things keep flipping around there just to, just to get <coughs> sound and, and a view. Okay, I, okay, I, Jack. Well, thanks. Sorry, just... I can't see any, I can't, yeah, speak up as much as you can and put it loud, okay? Speak speak up because um, okay. the connection is not the greatest, okay? Yeah, it's on my phone, which is just crazy, so... Okay, that's better, that's better. Not that, is that going to work? Yeah, okay. that's going to that's gonna work. I hope you can all hear Jack. I'm just looking at the comments here on Facebook and, and so on. I yeah. do hope you can hear Jack now. But anyway, Jack, could you hear what I was just saying? I'm not sure. Oh, now he's gone again. No, I'm right here. Oh, you're here, right there. But your picture's frozen. I think your connection's not very good. But anyway, okay, there we go. Now you now we see your moving smile. That's Dang much it. better. Uh, Jack, Dang it. Jack, tell me, tell us a little bit of. You've been attacked by eagles, right? Yeah, that's uh, you know that's almost minor. This whole story. Um, okay, go when ahead. I the, when I read the story. I have to tell you that every time I've ever read any kind of story about fishing or the Bering Sea or TV show or any of that stuff, my dad taught me this when I was a little guy. He said, whenever you know something about something, when you read about it in the paper, that's never what it's like. And that's pretty much how this article came across. Um, so what do you think? What do you think of this article? Well, I know from, from writing books, being, being a storyteller, that, that um, danger cells and stress cells, and, um, you know, you come up against these things that are bigger than you, and that's kind of, the, this whole story went through a whole series of those, you know, and unfortunately, they picked on the same eagles that you and I were just enjoyed the heck out of, right? Exactly, we enjoyed it, didn't we? We loved it, we loved it, and did you have the impression that people, uh, that this was a type of Hitchcock movie, The Birds, when you came into Dutch Harbor? <laughs> Well, you know, it's it would be real easy to write that story because it's so remote and no one knows about it. Right. And you can, you know, you can make it look just about any way you want. Um, I will tell you a little bit about my eagle um, encounter. I I hate to call it an attack. I actually wrote about it in my first book. Girl. I had accidentally stumbled on two chicks that had just fledged, and they were standing in the deep grass. And in Dutch Harbor and in the Aleutians, the problem is the nests are in the rocks or they're out of the grass, just like... Now, sorry, one second, I'm going to switch off the washing machine now. That's going... I can't believe it today, so hang on, hang on. One sec. <laughs> Go oh, your my wash. goodness. So anyway, uh, I did not know that I had stumbled on a couple of big chicks. I mean, they're just fledged, but um, I wanted to get a picture of the parents or, you know, and... Sorry, go on. That's the washing machine for you on a Sunday. Okay, sorry, go on, Jack. Oh, now his call has failed. I can't believe what's going on. Now, Jack, where are you? Oh, dear. Well, this is not our day, is it? <laughs> Just excuse me for a second. I'm going to try and get Jack back. I don't understand. I, I don't understand. He doesn't have a very good connection today. Oh, dear. I'll try again. 
We failed that too. We failed that too. Wait a second. Hello, Jack? Yeah, I had to reconnect. I have, I have no idea where I left off on my story. Okay, well, you know what? It's better on the, it's better like this. I'm going to hold, uh, I'm, I'm just going to hold this next to, um, just going to put the article back. And I apologize to everyone for the bad connection here. So hang on, I'm just going to uh, improve this a little bit. And I'll get you right back. One second, one sec. Let me just fix this here. Oh, this is not easy improvising everything today. One sec. So let me get the story back. Okay, Jack, go 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 ahead. I'm I'm holding your the phone right next to the mic so they can hear you. Okay, go ahead. And you're done. I hope you're done with your laundry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's funny. I don't know where I left off. To tell you the truth, I I. I, if I wanted to build it up, I could say I was attacked by a pair of eagles, and it was unbelievable um, accuracy how they pushed me away. But they never once touched me. They didn't need to. They used the, the, the exact amount of energy they needed to use. The female came at me first, pushed me away, uh, you know, right over my head, and then the, the male came right in, and they just worked a constant loop to push me away. And they had every right to. I had approached their uh, chicks, and I didn't know it. Those chicks are on the ground. So, um, yeah, I don't think anybody has been endangered for their life by eagles. I can tell you my son saved an eagle last year. I wasn't there. He's a fisherman himself. They found a, uh, an immature eagle in the water. And they built an extension on a fishnet and scooped him out of the water and brought him up on the beach and got him out of the net. He said it was, of course, they're not trained like the professionals are, but they had to avoid the talons and the beaks and uh, got him flipped over and dried out. So, you know, it's, uh, I don't think anywhere in the world people live this close to eagles. We're bound to have interactions, good and bad. If you call them bad, I mean, it would be bad if, if us or an eagle were injured. But good, but maybe we can help heal too. Right. That sounds bad. Yes. Still... Yeah, uh, Jack, I think that's very well described. And I think what we should also say, I mean, eagles are wild animals. They're wild animals just as much as jackals and, and, and owls and others are. And um, there have been attacks with peregrine falcons on, on climbers. We heard that from Rebecca last, uh, you know, just a few days ago, actually two days ago and so on. So, and ospreys are, are uh, notoriously, well, I should say, very well known. I mean, I was attacked by an osprey, um, you know, when you get too close to the nest. Uh, so, so um, it's, it's not uncommon, right? And I'm sure some of you can tell similar stories. So, um, you know, so... What, um, it's it just shocks me that people misrepresent the eagle so much because actually the eagle, uh, as far as I know, is is quite a skittish, uh, um, uh, 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 a very skittish scavenger that doesn't come close to people only when there is no option, right? Like you have in Dutch Harbor where you have very little space during the breeding season. That's my impression at least. Well, there's a couple things in that article that I didn't like. One of them, they had a picture of an eagle in a dumpster. And if you look, there's a wire. That's illegal. They do that for a reason. Dutch Harbor works really hard to keep these scavengers from getting in the garbage. You know, I mean, it's, it's easy eating. So you have to put a lid down on the dumpster or you can get a fine. And, you know, they use that as a... Uh, I'm getting some weird feedback. I hope that's working. Um, yes, also, it is. Go on. They uh, they talk about going to the uh, medical clinic. There used to be a nest really close to the parking lot of the medical clinic. And when people would get out of their cars, they would get swooped on by, by mama because the babies were close by. They finally took that nest down. And I know that would sound just horrible to people in Florida, but... There might be four or five hundred nests surrounding this little harbor of Dutch Harbor. And they just had to move it because it was a hazard. It was a hazard to the eagles and it was a hazard to the human beings. So 
that was one uh, that's one solution. They had to do a lot of studies. They had to do a lot of things to make it happen, but they made it happen. Right. Uh, so, so that that's a good ca uh, comment. So it's a very narrow area, and and also I heard that the. Yeah, uh, Jack. I also heard that the number five to eight hundred, if, if I remember correctly, the amount of eagles that is only um, sort of in February, March, around. Well, in factual uh, fact, right now, when when we were there, they're very high numbers. But I think you've been there in July, and and the count of eagles was much lower then, right? Yes, and I need I need to point that not twelve months a year, and the eagles show up during fishing season. Just like any other run of fish, they will stay there during the run. But for the six months that they're not there, the eagles just go out on their own. It's not like they're dependent on these fishing boats. And I saw that very same thing in Ketchikan with a tour boat that we ran. Okay, Jack, we have a very bad connection. And, then they, and then that's yeah. it for the year. We yeah. don't see them again. Come back and they are there. So. Yeah, yeah, Jack. Uh, let, let me call you direct, okay? I'm going to call you direct because I'll give a. Then we have a direct um, a phone phone call. Just hang on. So um, right. I'll I'll call you in a sec. It's much better that way. So hang on, okay? Okay. So just hang on. Bear with me. I want to do this as good as I can, and um, I'm glad to have Jack on the line. So I'm going to try and call him direct now. I just have to look up his. His phone number. So just give me a second, please, and excuse us for for not being perfect. Okay. So um, this is completely impro uh, improvised, and I'm very happy to have Jack on the line. So let me just see where his number is. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. Just give me a sec. Hopefully that'll go better. That'll be a better connection. <laughs> how many times? How many ways can we try to do this? Now, now the connection is very good, Jack. It's good. Yeah, now now we got it. Now we got a direct phone line. So that's much that's much better. So sorry, everyone. My apologies. Uh, we are really trying. Okay, we're really trying to make this work. Yeah, so you really are. <laughs> okay. No doubt. Okay. Now they can hear you loud and clear. This is much much better, Jack. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Well, I just turned on YouTube so I can see the questions too. So we might be gaining on this thing. Okay. Good. Good. That's great. That's great. Okay. So so yeah, you so you were saying. That you were attacked once and you came too close to their nest, obviously, and you didn't know that, and because you can't really see their nests, and then you were dive bombed by two eagles, right? And that was the only experience that you've had. But I mean, you've also, first of all, tell me something about the drunk fisherman. You've been, I mean, if there's anybody I respect who does his job properly as a fisherman, as a captain, it's you. What is this yeah. story about drunk, drunk fishermen in Dutch Harbor? Tell me. Well, I'll tell you what goes on in Dutch Harbor. Um, some crazy stuff went on in the 70s and 80s. Okay. And the stories have grown to mythical proportions, trust me. I mean, we signed two-month contracts, no no drugs, no alcohol. Instant fi You're instantly fired if you're caught with these things. You're a professional. You, you, have a, you have a life and a job to take care of. But the old days, was it was crazy time, you know. And everything from shipwrecks to... Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you name it. These things are just like these giant mythical stories that are just like people are still living off that stuff. So, no, drunk fishermen are, um, what do I want to say? They're not very common anymore. They come in, they get their work done, and we go back out to sea. It's, it's unfortunate, but that's the way they like to portray it in, uh, in Hollywood also. So, it's unfortunate. Right, so it's not like the deadliest catch, right? What we usually see. That's not your life, is it? <laughs> well, you know what I think of that show. Yeah, <laughs> no, that um, that show, um, and I'm sure there's some fans on here. Um, it's like any other um, um, reality TV. They have to build tension. They have to have drama. They have to have danger. They have to have risk. All these things. Or you just don't have a story. 
I mean, I'm writing a new story right now, and it's 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 fiction, but I have to build all those things into that into that book. It's just that's what we we as human beings thrive on that stuff. So uh, that's how this article that you you uh, informed me about today. That's how it's triggered. Every paragraph is a new fantastic thing that you and I just never had to deal with. You know. We just never saw this stuff because we were we were looking at the wonder of this thing, the amazing wonder of what's going on there. Right. But so so that was the dead <laughs> that was the deadliest catch. I'm just going to give you the opportunity, everybody, Facebook and YouTube, wherever you are, to dial in. I've just put in the number here, four two five two two three four nine six zero. So you're very welcome to join. Because I got Jack on the one line, I can take another line. That's great. So I would like to hear your opinion. Uh, what what is your encounter also as a national symbol? Do you think that the United States should have a different bird because it turns out that there's another side of the eagle, which is the scavenger, which is the real side. There is no other side. It is the side. Do you think that's disturbing? Would you rather have had the turkey? I'm just curious as a Canadian, you know, you tell me. The e Christian? I mean, that is such a low blow. Um, how many eagles do we have now? 45, 50,000? Yes. I mean, you and yeah. Hancock would know. Yes. So we're talking about five to 800 of them that live in really close proximity with humans, and they scavenge anything they can. Yes. But yes. Survivor, you know? Yes. Give me a break. Abs I mean, that's just how it is. That's how, that's how it is. And that's exactly... Yeah, that it's going on you know that's what's cool about it absolutely and it's wonderful that they scavenge because they actually make the whole ecological cycle work the things that we waste and and don't break down you know yeah. they, that's what they scavenge on for goodness sakes and and i completely agree so if you want to give in your comments there do you think that the that the uh, symbol of the, uh, the U.S. or the national symbol of the eagle, like it is portrayed there, should be put into question because the scavenger is it wrong, or should we rather have a foam rubber uh, eagle that never does anything to to um, give us the illusion that this is what life is about? Right? Would you rather want to? Well, <laughs> you know as well as I do, when one of these things come through the sky and their vision is six times better than ours, both in 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 focusing down on a, on a mouse or on a wide angle. Right. The, the wing control and the feather control and the, the way they're shaped, they are magnificent. There is nothing going to take away from that, you know? They're amazing. I never quit, get tired of looking at them. I mean, they're just... Awesome. What can I say? I couldn't agree more. And I'm just going to read you um, some comments out here that I see. Let's start with YouTube. Jackie Harter says, I love the eagle. It would not be the same if it were a turkey. Yes. And I think we tackled that story before. Osprey Mama says, no other bird should ever take a place of the eagle or anything. You, you can't have more than a majestic bird. There you go. Carrie Miller says, I do not care what the national symbol is. I do care what the, uh, the what the wild species is being judged as a national symbol disgusting and unfair there you go and brenda randall says we love our eagle uh, and jackie porter says no keep your eagle and so on so and let me just jump to uh, let's see what they <laughs> what they say on facebook uh, facebook oh well, now we have someone call, uh, calling in one second one sec i'm just we got okay hello Hello? Hello, Dr. Sasse? Yes, hello. With whom am I speaking, please? This is Susan North calling. Hi, Susan. How are you? So what's your... Hi, what? Bye. Great. Well, let's... Thanks, thanks for calling in, Susan. That's wonderful. So what is your comment on, on the Eagle? Where, and where are you... First of all, where are you calling from? Well, I'm, I live outside of, in a suburb of Chicago called Arlington Heights. Right. And... Um, I believe, in my opinion, that the eagle was chosen because it's more of a majestic-looking bird than a turkey. Right. And um, maybe at the beginning, people were afraid of eagles because they thought they were so... They can look pretty fierce. Even though they're scavengers, they look... They're, they're, they are like a symbol of power. 
Right, and, and, it's, and it's interesting. I'm just going to read you Tim Phillips' comment here on Facebook. He says, Benjamin Franklin did want the ego because it was seen as... Vi- uh, didn't want the ego because it was seen as violent, so he wanted the turkey. That was... I think that's, that's, uh, that's a good comment, actually. I think that's where it came from. Right? I don't... Uh, I, my American history is a little fuzzy, but that's probably very true. But I can't imagine the United States having a turkey as its symbol of first bird, being that it's such a large country, and I think that the eagle might have been chosen because um, back in the set, when we were first colonized in 70s and 76, and anybody out here, correct me on this, we were moving west, and we were taking over land, and I think that the eagle felt like a powerful, or looked like a powerful bird. Looked like a powerful bird, right. It's a six-foot wingspan, and and I don't want to get into a bad dissertation, but they're not the only country to have the eagle at the top of their flag, unfortunately. Um, And they use the eagle, too, because it was a symbol of power. Absolutely, and it has been misrepresented that way. Absolutely true. Yes, you're right. In Germany. Of Um, course, of course. Nobody's looking at the eagle that it's a scavenger. I didn't know it was a scavenger until... I got into this program with you, and you were talking about eagles. I really didn't know it was a scavenger. I had no idea where God food. Well, that's that's a, that's so, that's uh, then I can ask you a good question. Did that diminish your uh, did that d- diminish your image of an eagle because you learned it was a scavenger or anything as a national no, symbol? I, <laughs> no, I think it's one of the most majestic looking birds I have ever seen. So there you go. Most, the, I I. I don't know well, how to thank you. I don't know where I found you, but I don't know. I'm going to cry in a minute. I don't know how to thank you for all your education, for everything I have learned because I couldn't do this in school, because I travel around the world with you and I physically can't travel. <laughs> I just, and I, when, when I start talking about eagles, people are like, what's wrong with you? I start to cry because they're so beautiful. Because when they get to be five years old and they're white, Head and their white tail, mm-hmm. and they and when when they spread their wings, I'm sorry, it's just like there's not a, there's birds that are beautiful colored from Malaysia and in the Philippines, but the eagle looks like power. Doesn't right. it look like power to you? Right. Just look at those eyes. They look like they have power, and that's why I think countries use it as a symbol to represent themselves. Right. To represent them. They really look like they're strong and powerful, which they are. They're strong and powerful. Look at their feet. They, they, I, did see a, I did see a picture of a stellar eagle, so don't get mad at me. <laughs> they're beautiful. Um, but there weren't any stellar eagles in the United States. So I, I think, I don't see that the United States is ever going to change the eagle from being its national bird. And right. nobody else can join in. I don't want to take up all the time talking, but yeah. Well, that's 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 fine, Susan. Well, thank you so much for joining the show, and 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 thanks for those very kind words. I I don't know what to say, but it certainly isn't me. All I do is convey all the uh, you know all the educational messages I get every week from all the people who are so generous to to participate. Okay, so I'm only the media oh, to that. Okay. You might be the messenger of all the information that you're getting, but I have no other way to get the information. So that's where my thank you, thank you, thank you a thousand times over. Well, you're very, ki- very you're very kind, but I don't, I, you know, you're making me turn red here. I think that's enough. Right. <laughs> I don't want that you're much because wine. I don't think I deserve this. <laughs> but but it's very it's very it's really very kind of you. And uh, well, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, not just from you, but from. <laughs> All the people that you've had that were rehabbers that, I mean, I have no, everybody else too probably feels the same way. We have no way to access these people. And I've been sick and housebound and I I have no way to access these things or even go to school and stuff. So, um, at this point, um, so it's, this is, this is my personal education and you're the messenger. That's that's very kind. Well, I'm going as you know. I'm going to go to to northern Japan very soon, and I can't wait. 
Yeah, and and I think that's going to be very interesting. So, well, thanks, it Susan. Is. Thanks so much for being on the show, and and thanks for that kind comment. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. You're okay. Welcome. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Okay, fine. Bye. Okay, so that was Susan Noor. Thank you very much. That is very kind. So we really appreciate that. So, Jack, are you still there? I am here. You hear me? Yes. Could Did you hear that conversation? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, you mean over here on the side? Okay, well, the, um, there's something going on on your phone. It's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> got lots of technical it's, it's issues. Endless. <laughs> we got lots of technical issues today. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, everyone yeah. gives thumbs up. Thanks, by the way, to Osprey Mama for, for the donation. That's going to go into the J Japan trip. That's wonderful. But by the way, I just have to say, the eagle, the bald eagle, hasn't got the largest um, uh, spa wingspan. I'm going to see a bird that has even a larger wingspan. Uh, put into the comment what that, and uh, into the comments, what is that the name of the eagle? that I'm going to see in Japan that has a bigger uh, uh, wingspan than the bald eagle. Makes the bald eagle look small. <laughs> what could that be? Yeah. Let's see if they've paid you attention. Gotta, yeah, you to you, Jack, that's not for you. You know, so I'm not going to... No, I'm not going to say it. No. Okay, I'm just going to see if they have paid attention here. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? Um, my friend um, uh, Mark Horner said there's one in the Seattle Jew. Uh, zoo, sorry, in the Seattle Zoo. And I decided not to go to the Seattle Zoo because I want to be so overwhelmed by the size. So, uh, otherwise, the surprise goes away. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if anyone uh, has put put it in. Um, let me just go f go back here. I'm just going to see what Facebook is saying. Has uh, let's see. No one has come up with a name so far, but that's fine. I'm sure they will. Okay, Jack. Is there anything else you would like to uh, you would like to add? Yeah, there, there kind of is. Um, you know, you and I have been out there twice. I've been out there for thirty years, and um, I think you were so. I think you were insulted by that this morning. It was like, wait a minute. I've been in Dutch Harbor. That's not what I saw. Yes, I that's what they call they call a hit job. You know, that article is just nothing but a cheap shot, and. <laughs> It was like, I think it was upsetting to you. And I looked at it and thought, everything I've ever read about up there isn't right, you know. So. Uh, ab absolutely. I, you know, first I was so pleased when I saw it. I said, oh, these beautiful pictures. And you saw the town there and all the familiar pictures. And then I started reading this and I said, wait a second. That's not Dutch Harbor. What they're talking about. By the way, they yeah. got the correct. Yes, it's the Stellar's Eagle. And the spelling is not Stellar, S-T-E-L-L-A-R. It is, and some have put it correct. It's Stellar. It comes from a, it comes from a biologist who was an explorer yep. called Stellar with an E. Okay, so Stellar's Sea Eagle, just like there's a Stellar's J. So that is correct. That is correct. It's got an eight-foot wingspan. It's a magnificent bird. I can't wait to see it. I do not want to see it in the <laughs> in the Seattle Zoo. Otherwise, my whole surprise moment and excitement will be gone when I show you the Stellar's sea eagle. Okay, that's why. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> yes. Okay, Jack. Jack. Well, thanks so much for for um, you know for being there. I don't think yeah, we're going to okay. make it too long today. I. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, and, and by the way, how's the Super Bowl going? I have no idea. Uh, believe it or not, I'm probably the only Alaska fisherman that doesn't watch football. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So I have no idea how it's going. So uh, anyway, it's, yeah. it's wonderful. We got so many people watching despite the Super Bowl. <laughs> that's quite something. Yeah, that's amazing. I appreciate that. The Rams are winning, say, whoever they are. This story was Los Angeles, great. I don't know. No. <laughs> a great example of how you can find the mud anywhere you want to go. I mean, Christian and I went out there and just explored the wonder and had a wonderful time. And these guys come up with this ghetto shot. It's just like, it's insulting. So anyway, that's my take on it. Okay, Christian, you take over. Okay, thanks a lot, Jack. And take care, okay? We'll, we'll talk later. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay fine. Okay, so that was Jack Mullen for you. Thank you so
Oh, sorry, no sound. No sound. Sorry, I, I switched the sound off. I just saw your comments. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, for some reason, the, the, the sound was off. And I just discovered the sound was off. I don't know how long the sound was off. Yeah, sorry, Mohammed. I, 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 I see it now. Thanks to your comments. I got it. I got it. Got it. Okay. Um, got it. So anyway, um, I just wanted to say, I don't know when I switched the sound off. I'm sorry. I had so many, uh, I was improvising so much. So be so kind and just give me thumbs up. It makes me feel good because it was overwhelming. I tried to get Jack on. He had a very poor internet connection and I've been really trying to go backwards and forwards to make this an interesting show. And I sincerely apologize for the technical errors that I have made. Okay. And uh, now you can hear me again. Um, they're still saying can't hear. Really? They're still saying they can't hear. That's not possible. Oh, the washing machine too. Yes, you heard the washing machine. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so there was the washing machine. There was everything was going wrong today, right? And yes, I got, you got the sound back. That's great. Okay. Uh, anyway, you, you, uh, I can hear you now. Thanks. Rhonda is saying about 30 seconds. Okay, so it wasn't too long and I don't know what I did. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just be forgiving, okay? I tried to make this interesting, and you know what? This card, and thanks to all of you, thanks to all of you, this is the card that has, that thanks to your very nice and generous donations, okay? Thanks to your very nice and generous donations here, you can see it says 16 days unlimited. This is my Japanese railway card that, uh, that gives me the possibility to stream endlessly to you uh, in Japan. So thank you uh, for all the donations. Also Osprey Mama today. That is really what makes the difference. I have a SIM card that I can put into my phone um, and I'm really wiring everything up to give you the best possible uh, things about Japan. And I wanted to tell you something. Uh, I'm going to show you one more thing from, from um, Lady Hawk, by the way, uh, which is quite marvelous. She sent it to me. But before I, I uh, end the, the exciting uh, Northern Japan story, I just wanted to say uh, I didn't read too much about Japan intentionally, not because I don't want to be educated, but I want the surprise moment. I want to show you what the Japanese trains are like. I want to show you the way pe the people live, the way they eat food, the way we eat food, and everything. Okay, so that's the main reason. I can see Jack's back on there. So that's the main reason, okay? So uh, there should be an element of surprise in broadcast. That's what makes it fun. The element of surprise of giving you such really bad technical... Um, uh, you know, your te technical issues today. That's the element of surprise I have to offer. <laughs> okay, now to Lady Hawk. And let me just jump to her comments there. She wrote me something quite wonderful and everything has gone wrong. So let me see. So I better get this right. I better get this one right. Okay, at least something. So she writes to me. She writes to me. And I was going to stop this. This is Lady Hawk's wonderful challenge, uh, uh, channel. So she's just published this, already got 1,000 views on this. And she writes here, let me read this out. I don't know if you got to see these. The first video is from Presidio Red Tail Hawk defending their nest against a great horned owl. So this is interesting. The owl and her mate are trying to take over their nest, coming every night. The owl in the daytime yesterday and the hawk is seen flying and attacking the owl. They lock talents in the nest. Incredible footage. So let's go, Lady Hawk. Thank you so much. So let's see where the moment comes. I can see there's the great horned owl. The owl gets, uh, lets go of the hawk's foot and flies off. But the hawk comes right back. This is like much more interesting than the Super Bowl. Listen to this. Goes right back and bashes it, man. That's it, right? This is the real football game here. And there's a cry war. Oh, here we go. And that's it. That's the score. Look at it. How exciting. Here we go. Oh, did you hear the owl? Now, here's your, here's your real Super Bowl, okay? So, let me get out of the way. Sorry, what am I doing today? I'm, I'm really doing this not very well. I'm going to get out of the way now. Completely. Okay, that's me out of the way. So I just have to spool back again because you just missed it, didn't you? Here we go. So there's this tremendous fight. That's on Lady Hawk's. Uh, so so as she says, the red hawk, the red tail hawk is first chased away. I'm going to spool a bit forward now. And let me find the moment.
about here, about here. Okay, so watch now. There goes the owl and here comes the red tail hawk. That small red tail hawk giving it the bash and this is the best Super Bowl you've ever seen, right? So who wins? <laughs> Thank you, Lady Hawk. Very great footage. So this is new footage on her channel. So have, have a look at it. And then you can see the red tail hawk gets right back into the nest. And this is not the end of the story, right? It's going to go on for quite some time. So thank you for that, Lady Hawk. And then we have one more. And again, I'm going to read out the text here because this is also incredible. Um, it's called Double Mating on the Nest and also is, that is from today, by the way, it's today. So what did she write here? The second video I got today of the trio nest. Of course, we know the trio with Star and Valor, uh, Valor 1 and Valor 2. They both have been seen mating with, with her one right after another. Wow. A double mating on the nest. First time I think we've ever seen it. Thank you, Lady Hawk. Let's take a look. Double mating, that's insane. That's insane. So this is four and a half minutes. I'm just gonna let this roll because the, the, uh, the footage is absolutely magnificent. Thank you. And then she says, I will prop, pop up in your broadcast Super Bowl Sunday, but I'm going to go to Friends to House Watch and check on by my phone. So here we are, thank you. Much better uh, coverage here. So there we go. That was more interesting than the Super Bowl game. Thank you, Tim, for writing that. That's a trio nest. Yes, Inez, that's right. And Mohammed is very happy to, uh, to see that wonderful nest. So we're going to watch this now. And let me just jump right back to YouTube. Yes, good job, Susan. Very nice, Susan. Ah, oh, there's Lady Hawk. Thanks, Christian. That was incredible to see the Hawk defend. Yes, so she's actually on us on here now. Very nice to see that. So we're going to just watch this. Uh, there's a lot of nest building at the moment. So I'm just going to spool a little bit forward. Let's see where I find the moment. Yes, here we go. So just spool a bit forward. And here we go. I think that's going to be the first time. You can hear the train in the background. Wow, so here, here's the first time. So that's a steward's nest, right? Here we go. Wow, the camera is incredible there. And you can see the snow around. I don't know, Lady Hawk, is this Eastern time they have there? 1350 is probably Eastern time, right? Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that is in fact absolutely unique. What a, what a wonderful, so Valor 1 was mating first. I just see the comments here. And then Valor 2, exactly in the order that you should have things. We like order, don't we? <laughs> that's the way it should be. <laughs> Guessing X soon. Yes, says Dolly. Lots, lots of them. So that is perfect. Isn't that magnificent? Two males and a female. That's it. Exactly, Carrie. That's exactly. Central time, I believe. Okay, so that's two hours difference from here. So that must have been 11 hours. So that's our central time. Okay, so that was central time. And let's just see. I'm just jumping back to my the Facebook friends here and see what they're saying. Oh, they're talking a, bit, a little bit about football here. And scrolling right down. Wow, that is amazing, isn't it? Heather also says amazing. Ines says amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yes, it is. Very nice. Well, it's wonderful that we can, you know, we can, um, <laughs> that we can see this finally. So I'm just going to put down the sound. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to make myself a little bit bigger here. There we, there we are. There we are. So anyway, um, you know, I'm just so excited about Japan. You can't believe it. So um, I'm, I'm packing everything. So get ready. I'm flying uh, Friday just uh, as, as Friday morning starts, just after midnight with David Hancock to Taiwan. And then uh, we will land there. Gosh, I have to get the time now. Saturday afternoon, their time, which is Friday night here. 
yes, Friday night here. And then I'll be probably broadcasting Sunday morning there, which is Saturday afternoon here. So that's in six days from now. Uh, so expect to see something. Oops, here we go. This is a, probably that's a beautiful goshawk, but that's not what I was trying to show. Um, let's get right back to the original story anyway. That's where we started. Um, so uh, I, I will be broadcasting there and showing you the snow festival, hopefully. And hopefully I have uh, the, the bandwidth is good and the SIM card works like it should. I can't, I can't wait to show you all this. It's going to be very unique. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm so excited. What can I say? I don't even. My, at the moment, I don't have the words because I'm, I'm truly excited. This is going to be such an epic um, adventure going with, with Mike Sears, uh, who is very knowledgeable. He's an incredible academic. He's got so many degrees. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and he's learning Japanese too. It's quite a mark, mark. He's also um, a, a doctor at the Children's Hospital. And then there's, of course. Our, our incredible David Hancock, who's, um, yeah, 81, nearly, nearly 81, and uh, going with us and uh, with his incredible enthusiasm, his knees are okay. Now let's hope his health is going to be okay. So it's going to be a, an incredible journey. That's all I can say. So I just wanted to thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate that. Uh, and yes, it's going to be the Stellar's Eagle. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Stellar's Eagle. They have a beautiful... Uh, crane there and they also have the white-tailed eagles as as many of you know so on that note i'm going to say uh have a happy sunday so the next time i'm going to talk from from you uh, to you is either on my journey just before we take off or in taiwan or pro most probably it'll be when we arrive in uh in northern japan i can't wait to communicate this this to you uh quite incredible really so so anyway, thanks for, for uh, taking the time. I appreciate that. I know how valuable your time is and I know how valuable your, your Super Bowl, Bowl is and everything I, I, I truly appreciate it. So, so let me first say goodbye to all my Facebook friends. Goodbye and have, have a wonderful weekend still. And then I will do the same to, uh, to all Facebook, uh, sorry, to all YouTube uh, friends. And thank you for being there. Also, thank you to Jenny for taking again the time to be there, uh, and and thanks also to Lady Hawk for for uh, always providing great information. Thanks to Osprey Mama for the uh, generous contribution. Thanks to all of you who make this possible. I can't tell you how excited I always am to broadcast to you, and I'm always uh, finding good content. Thanks to you, and and thanks to all your help. So thanks, thanks to all of you. And if if you do care, just give thumbs up. Thank you so much, and have a have a wonderful. Uh, you know, a wonderful rest of the week.